Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Drone. Super excited today about this episode because uh, in March of 2016, DJI announced, uh, right at the beginning of March, DJI announced their brand new uh, Phantom 4 would be coming out. I was able to get one pretty quickly and uh, get online and order it. And thanks to DJI, I now have one in my hands. It's uh, the end of March. Took about three weeks for it to ship and arrive, but it's here and I'm super excited. Gonna open it up for you today, take a look and see uh, what's inside, get it all set up and uh, kind of walk you through that process and then take it out for our first flight. And we're also gonna follow up with several other videos uh, comparing it to other drones, uh, doing some tests on it, kind of just really checking out a lot of the features that they say are new, including the collision avoidance and, set and such. So let's take a look and see what we can see here. Gonna be very uh, careful not to cut too far into the box because I think this actually has a nicer container underneath it. The box is nice and tight in there. And voila, the Phantom 4. Set this up right inside. So take a look. Pretty cool box that it comes in. Um, it is, uh, yeah, it's got some information on the side, serial number, etc. So let's take a quick gander at what's in the box. Now it looks like we can probably thank our good friends at um, 3DR for raising the game of what these things come in because this looks like it comes in a pretty nifty um, styrofoam but uh, still pretty durable little container and so I'm gonna set this box down and take a look inside of this now on the front it's got directions on how to open it I guess you pull the latch out not swivel it up it seems to be the direction that it goes and there we go. So once you kind of pull the latch out and swivel it like that, uh, you see there's a little there's a little hook here. If you can check it out, that's the little hook that's inside there that kind of holds the thing in place. But there it is in all its glory. It is definitely a uh, shinier version. Now in the past, I have owned a Phantom 1, a Phantom 2, and a Solo. I did not own a Phantom 3, so I can't really compare it, although I have flown one, a friend of mine's before. But it looks like it comes with uh, the remote with some built-in antennas and a holder for your tablet. And this remote is heavy. This must have a lot of guts in it. It comes with the actual Phantom the landing gear and the gimbal already attached. And man, this guy is actually pretty heavy and dense too. And I want to say this thing seems a little bit smaller than the old Phantom. I would uh, be interested to compare it to a Phantom 3 in terms of its size. You can see the sensors down there on the bottom. I, th I think those must be the things that help it fly indoors. Um, the battery looks like it's already in it. And these two little holes in the front, I believe are the um, obstacle avoidance cameras. And then of course the camera is Looks like the camera's on it and ready to go. So we're gonna set that down, see what else is in the box. We have propellers, the, the Loctite kind. It looks like they lock on. And it looks like it comes with uh, eight propellers. So you get a spare set, which is nice. And this nice little bag to put them in. You could also probably put sunglasses in there if you wanted to. All right, here is a power cord. Here is a power supply. I'm assuming this is for charging the battery. And finally, move this over here. The manual, the Phantom 4 manual. So, uh, wow, pretty cool experience opening this thing and, and certainly a pretty cool little uh, case that it comes in as far as travel. And it, it's definitely a small form factor as far as this case goes. I could see holding on to this and using this to travel with it. Um, 
maybe even putting this inside of a Pelican case or inside of something a little bit bigger to protect it even more. But for just general day-to-day -day stuff, it's not a bad little, little carrying case. There's the inside. So it looks like there's, oh, here's the other thing I'm missing. This looks like a USB cable and another USB cable. This must be for maybe upgrading the software. So I'm gonna close this up and set it to the side and see what we do first here. So I guess I'll go ahead and open up the manual and see what it recommends. Manual comes in a little plastic container. Of course, you're going to want to put your uh, FAA number on the side of your Phantom if you want to stay in compliance. Here's a uh, document about Know Before You Fly, educational campaign that helps people uh, understand what they should and shouldn't do with their new toy. Uh, here's, a, here's a list of everything that comes in the box. It's got the aircraft body, remote control, uh, two pairs of propellers, the intelligent flight battery, battery charger, power cable, manual, gimbal clamp, USB OTG cable, micro USB cable, and micro SD card, 16 gigs. So that's kind of cool that it comes with its own micro SD card. So first of all, we need to download the app. So I've got my handy uh, iPad Mini 2. I've been told I should get a faster and better uh, iPad Mini, but we're going to try this one because it's all I've got for now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into the App Store. And see if I can show you what I'm doing here. App Store. And search for DJI Go. So search DJI. There we go. All right, I'm gonna get that, install. Now it is a free app that will allow you to um, use your Phantom with your iPad or I assume there's also um, a version for Android. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I'm pretty sure there is. Okay, the DJI Go app is downloading. While that's downloading, one thing it asks you to do is to check the battery levels on the back of your Phantom. And I assume you just do that by pushing this button. And as you can see, only two lights uh, light up, which makes me think it's halfway. So it would probably be a great idea to go ahead and remove and charge the batteries. And I don't know if this has rechargeables in it now. Looks like the remote also has rechargeables. Um, or if it doesn't, it comes with batteries in it because when I push it, it gives me three out of four lights, which I assume means three out of four um, level, uh, meaning that it's three quarters full, but probably needs charging as well. But um, yeah, the old, at least for the Phantom 2 and the Phantom 1, it took AA batteries. So this is. Uh, little different now that it's a rechargeable remote. And this stands plugs into a standard 110 outlet, assuming you're in the US. I'm not sure if they sell it with adapters or if they sell it with a different type of power supply if you're in a different country, but I assume one or the other. And then uh, looks like what you want to do is remove the battery by squeezing the top and the bottom. Oh, and that comes out pretty nicely. Now this battery is a pretty uh, chunky guy. It looks like it's a lithium polymer. 5350 milliamp hours, 15.2 volts. So it's 5350 milliamp hours and 15.2 volts. That's a good size battery. This is uh, quite a bit more substantial than the very first DJI Phantom battery. And I like the way these little grip things work here to kind of allow you to squeeze it and it for it to come out. Because I remember getting batteries in and out of the two was not very easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, 
per the directions, make sure I'm seeing this right, remove the lithium battery, charge time one hour and 20 minutes. So this plugs in here and there it goes, it looks like it's charging as you can see. So it's counting those first two little um, dots because that's where it is in the charge cycle. And then it does have a book that tells you a little bit about the actual battery. <clears throat> so that's good, how to be safe with lithium polymers. And then we'll go ahead and charge and plug in the uh, remote as well, which it looks like the remote has this little side thing that pops out. It's cool because it's covered so that if you're uh, out in moisture, it's not going to get wet. Plug that in, and there it goes. It's, it is also counting upward. So now we've got both of these guys counting upward as they charge. So I have been uh, away for a little bit. It looks like the actual Phantom battery is fully charged, which is great. It's uh, showing four green lights. The controller is on its fourth light. Uh, while it's still blinking, it's still charging, but I think I could disconnect it now and I would be pretty safe to fly it, um, <clears throat> despite the fact that it's not fully charged. But I'm gonna leave it plugged in for a little bit longer and talk about a couple of other things. Number one, I don't think this thing comes with a actual um, lightning cable for an iPad or an iPhone. The reason is because I looked at both of these and I actually tried gently to plug them into my uh, iPad. Neither of them work. These are actually cables that you use for updating your firmware in the Phantom, which we'll do in a different video. But uh, So you're going to want to hang on to these. They're just standard USB cables. but. Um, they allow you, it looks like, to plug into both the controller and the Phantom to update firmware. So set them aside. Um, I actually have a Phantom or a um, lightning cable, and it looks like a pretty good length for connecting um, to my iPad and putting it onto the controller. So I'm going to use this actual lightning cable. They look a little bit like these USB cables, but it's different. So don't try to force one of those USB cables into your iPad. The other thing I was reading about is the fact that. Um, there are two different types of propellers. There's obviously clockwise and counterclockwise, different rotations, and they go across from one another. Um, the two clockwise would go on these two corners, and the two counterclockwise would go on these two corners, or vice versa, but they're not going to be next to one another. So that said, they have a silver or a black um, coat around them, and on the actual Phantom, you can see there's a black arrow and there's a silver arrow. So you're going to want to make sure to put the right one on the right um, on the right motor. These are uh, quick release. They are uh, not the kind that spin on, but these actually latch on. I haven't put one on yet, but I have this silver one here that I'm going to put here on the silver side. And I'm not quite sure how you do it. Oh, first of all, there's a piece of plastic on the bottom, so. Start by peeling that plastic off. That would be a good place to begin. So I've taken the plastic off the bottom of this one. This one again, it has a silver ring. You go ahead and put it on to this silver one here and turn it. Oh, and now it seems to be latched on. You push down and you rotate it clockwise and you can tell it's just sitting in the right spot. Um, and then to take it off, you press down and you rotate counterclockwise. And I'm sure the black one's going to be just the opposite. So here's a black one here. And I'm going to push this down, find the right spot, push it down, and turn it counterclockwise. So this one latches the opposite direction. But once it's on there, you can tell it's pretty, it feels pretty tight. So I've put the four props on, and now I've got the uh, battery, which is fully charged. As you can see when I press this button, it lights up all four lights. And my remote, which is almost fully charged. I'm going to go ahead, well, I wonder if I can just leave it. No, I'm going to go ahead and unplug it and go with the three-quarter charge on it, just so I can uh, get everything else going. And I'm going to unplug the battery the phantom battery from the actual charger 
And there's definitely a top and a bottom on this guy, so you're going to want to make sure you get it in the right way. So there is a right and a wrong way to put it in. Um, be sure that this word Phantom 4 is on the bottom and the button's on the right, uh, opposite of what I said a moment ago. And then it slips in, slips in very nicely. And again, you can push the button down and you can see all four lights are lit up. So I'm going to set that here for a moment. Uh, one other thing you have to do before you fly or take off is remove the guard from the gimbal, which is right here. Which uh, you probably want to hold on to this thing because I'm sure it's great for travel to make sure your camera's not flopping all around. So we'll set that aside. And I'm going to pull the little bit of plastic off the end of the lens. And just take a quick look at this camera. It's uh, pretty tiny. It says DJI on it. It's silver. The gimbal is actually holding the camera in two places. So that's a 16 gig Lexar, decent little card um, that comes with it. Obviously there's going to be a right side up and an upside down when you put it in, so you want to make sure you get it the right direction. So I'm putting it in. That's the wrong way with the, it feels like the wrong way with the uh, uh, contacts down, so I'm putting it with the contacts up. And there it goes. All right, now it's now it's behaving as expected. Push in until it locks, and then push again to pull it out. So there it is. So it doesn't go in the camera, which is actually great. It makes it much easier to get to. I like that. So we're going to set this guy down. We are going to take the remote, and we are going to take the uh, iPad, and we're going to take that cable I had. Uh, where did I put it? <clears throat> Lightning cable. Put the charger over here for a minute. Plug the lightning cable uh, USB into the back of the remote. Put the put the iPad into the holder. Let's see, what do I have to do? Oh, there we go. You push this little button on the side. Ah, look at that. When you push this, it goes up. It's got a spring in it. And you clamp down on it. So I'm going to go ahead and let it go all the way up. Put my iPad right there. Clamp it down nice and tight. Seems to be holding on fairly well. Now I'm going to put my lightning cable into the side here. Turn on the iPad. Okay, how to connect. So, here's all the directions. It says uh, turn on the remote, press the power button, turn on the aircraft's battery. So, to do that you hold down this button here for two seconds. There we go. It's alive. Oh, you have to log into your DJI account. So, I'm going to do that real quick. It actually makes you log in through the app. Okay, so it's important that you uh, have a DJI account before you start. Um, that way you have something to log into. Um, I already had one set up, but it's the first time I've logged in using the DJI Go app. So set it all up on your computer before you um, set up your DJI account at DJI.com DJI before you start all this process. Um, I set mine up when I ordered this thing. so. Okay, I got this little message that says slide to update. It says uh, inconsistent firmware found. Firmware of some modules does not match the firmware 
aircraft firmware, this may cause compatibility issues. Refresh the firmware to resolve. So I'm sliding that and it says it's upgrading. You can see that at the top. So I am on Wi-Fi here, so that helps make it a little bit faster. 24%. I'm assuming this is updating the firmware in my remote, not necessarily in the bird itself. Seventy-five percent, eighty-four percent updated. So I guess the theme here, one of the themes is this thing is not just uh, get it out and fly it like you do a SEMA or, or a Phantom 1 or a Phantom 2 for that matter. It's a little more setup involved. Okay, upgrade successful, hit complete. So now it says aircraft connected. See that right there? And I'm going to go ahead and hit camera view. Hit activate Phantom 4. You must activate your aircraft the first time you connect to the app. Doing so will also activate your one year warranty. All right, next. So I'm going to choose the name for my aircraft. Uh, I'm going to call it. R S D Phantom uh, Control Model Control Mode and such. Um, so this allows you to actually set your control mode whether you want to use your left uh, stick for yaw and up and down and your right stick for direction which is the default mode 2 and that is what I want so I'm going to stick with that camera forward and down for C1 gimbal follow and FPV mode for C2 that's good so you can customize those uh, do I want imperial or metric I'm going to do imperial and NTSC for video output <clears throat> beginner mode it's highly recommended you fly in beginner mode it is your first time flying in this mode the aircraft will not take off without a valid GPS signal Nah, I'm going to turn that off I'm doing this too long. Confirm your account. Yep, there's my account. So it's doing some sort of a connection to the server to confirm everything's good. It says Phantom 4 activation successful. Update firmware to latest version before flying. So I'm going to hit update firmware. <clears throat> Here are the firmware updates. Improved download speed for image and video. Improved motor stopping method. Pull the left stick to the bottom right corner when pressing the return to home. Added support for HDMI extension. All right, download now. Okay, so I switched over to camera mode and uh, it's now downloading the firmware update. It told me I required a firm firmware update and it is, it is now downloading it. You can see 100% downloaded. Please don't disconnect the RC in your mobile device. Make sure the RC power is more than 50%. This update takes 10 minutes. Please don't turn off the RC during upgrade. So, uh, it looks like I'm actually updating the firmware on the radio control, not necessarily on the Phantom. Phantom itself is just sitting over here uh, waiting to be flown and it is kind of uh, loud when it's sitting here. It's got a little bit of a engine noise kind of going on inside it, which is interesting. So we're gonna let it finish updating here and see what happens. It's interesting this uh, camera stuff going on in the background. You can see that's a live view with the camera inside the room. Okay, so once it actually starts upgrading, it makes this beeping noise that you can hear, and it kind of gives you an upgrade status right there. Didn't take too long, took about two and a half minutes. I didn't have the cameras running the whole time. RC has upgraded to the latest version. Please reboot your RC. So I guess that means I need to turn this off. There we go. Actually, I don't think I had to turn the power off. Uh, the 
the uh, RC off first. I think I just had to push the button once and then push it again. That's how you turn it on and off. So I just booted it back up. Aircraft requires update, download, update from DJI Go. So I'm going to turn the Phantom back on. Okay. It's back on. Gimbal and main controller disconnected. There we go. IMU is initializing. Do not move the aircraft until initialization is complete. Overall status. Aircraft requires update. Download from DJI Go homepage. All right. So let's see if I can go back to the DJI Home Go homepage. Let's see. Okay, so after a few seconds of download, it told me I needed to connect aircraft. So I'm actually going to take these cables here, and it looks like the little adapter cable goes into the actual Phantom. Let's see, where does that happen? Over on this side. So I'm going to plug this in right here. Yep, that fits nicely. Make sure you get it in the right direction. And then uh, I'm going to plug this, I guess, into my actual, uh, into my actual, um, well, no, that's not going to work. Oh, yeah. So this, so basically I need my lightning cable, and I need to plug it into this adapter over here. So right like this. So now what I've got is I've got my USB plugged into my Phantom. I've got then uh, this USB plugged into my lightning cable and that is connected into my iPad. So it says aircraft connected. Uh, start upgrade. So we're going to hit the upgrade here. So you actually have to plug the iPad into the uh, Phantom in order to upgrade the Phantom itself and you have to uh, plug the iPad into the uh, Remote in order to upgrade the remote. So Just a little bit of a thing make sure if you are using an iPad that you have a lightning cable Otherwise, it looks like it would work natively with uh, uh, Android device using the USB Okay, after um, Probably about 15 minutes. Uh, it says upgrade successful uh, Complete, oh, upgrade complete. Connect remote control to use aircraft. So I'm gonna hit complete there, and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my cable from the aircraft, which is this guy here. So again, this is my um, lightning cable that's going into my iPad. <clears throat> I'm gonna unplug the little USB adapter out of the aircraft. One quick note to I did go ahead and pull the propellers off while it was updating. Uh, you know, you hear these stories sometimes about how the um, during the update the the props start spinning and the thing flies off the table and ruins your iPad and everything. So, figured if the motors were going to spin, at least I'd be safe. They didn't, but again, probably just a good policy. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the uh, plug the cable back into my remote here, making sure I get it the right direction. Okay, that's connected. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, camera button on there and see if I can see the camera. Hey, and there it is. There's me. And there's the whole room that we're looking at, which is pretty cool. It's a camera, a shot of my uh, GoPro shooting, <laughs> shooting my iPad which is live streaming the camera feed. So it's not exactly the real picture, but it's pretty clear. Uh, it says safe to fly non-GPS because we're indoors. And uh, looks like we're all ready to go fly this guy. So just real quick to give everybody a, a quick rundown on everything that had to happen. Uh, before you start with all this, definitely download the DJI Go app. 
Um, be sure to charge the batteries completely before you start doing the updates because you don't want the batteries to die while it's updating. Uh, be sure you have a lightning cable if you have an iPad or an iPhone or uh, it comes with USB cables if you have an Android device. And uh, it's not super intuitive, but the instructions kind of walk you through it and it's a combination of looking at this quick start guide that came with it as well as just looking at the videos that come in the DJI Go, DJI Go app. So that said, I'll um, take it out for a flight here and see how it does. And then uh, I think we'll be wrapped up on this video, but just wanted to give everybody a good shot at uh, kind of seeing the whole setup process. Super excited to get this guy in the air. So let's go do it. One thing I want to do is go ahead and uh, we're going to take a look at the camera. So let's see, how do we do that? Now I can see what the thing sees. So now if we hit, uh, oh, I just took a still. Uh, how do I? Technically challenged. Video, okay. Now the video's rolling. Okay. So here we go, we're gonna take off. Oh, it's right there. Oh yeah, that's also how you do it. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so there's several <laughs> buttons on here. Smart mode switch. Uh, this must be how you tilt the camera up and down. Oh, yeah, look, the camera tilting up and down. And now, we'll go ahead and uh, engage the motors and take off. Watch more videos.